how difficult was it for you to transition to a raw food diet? What problems did you have? I just went for it. I ate my last pint of soy delicious ice cream and that was that. I was content. I was ready. <laughs> also, I was a little bit more fortunate than most because as I simultaneously decided to do it, like I said, one of the uh, top chefs in the whole raw food world happened to be in my town for three weeks making food two or three times a day for the health food store. <clears throat> so I, I was a little bit spoiled on that beginning. It was a nice intro. I got to eat the most, the best gourmet dishes I, you, know, you could ever imagine <laughs> every day. So I, I was a little bit more fortunate <laughs> on that transition. Uh, you may have spoken about the problems people deal with with winter right now, but could you, if you haven't, can you say, uh, um, is it is it more difficult to be raw in the winter time, and is it especially a problem because the foods that we get, that we eat, that we buy mostly from the grocery stores, are shipped in, and therefore there's been a lot of time lag between when they were picked and by the time they get here, and so I would assume that they've lost a lot of their vitality, a lot of their nutrient content. So is this a concern? It is a concern. I've heard studies such as. Uh you know, a lot of the fruit comes in, it's frozen, shipped frozen. When you freeze something, you lose up to 75% of the nutrient value. That much could be lost. So, you know, you don't even know what trucks they're coming in on, how far, how many hands it's been through. I don't know, it's, it's definitely, it's not ideal to live off the grocery store food. And I found that out. I mean, like I said, it's been two and a half years. I spent the past two winters in one winter in the high mountains and the last winter here in Boulder, which is still the mountains. And as a grocery store raw foodist, I've you know I've had it. <laughs> I want to grow a garden ASAP. Even if I in my apartment, I want to grow a garden, set stuff up, you know, my living room if I have to. So, because it's so essential to have that fresh picked food. It's 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 a world of difference, you know. I, from eating like a salad that you bought at the store in comparison to a salad that you just picked, I mean, you get high from a salad that you just picked. You feel really good. Just, just grocery store salad, you know, you feel all right, but you don't feel like the same as that fresh picked salad. Uh, I can say the best I ever felt in my life is when I did, uh, I was exceptionally active. I hiked every day in the high mountains and I lived off mostly wild foods, wild edibles, different plants that I knew were edible, uh, different flowers. <clears throat> just basically drank water and ate wild edibles for the most part. And, and I felt so good, like so clear and so so strong and vibrant. It's the best I've ever felt, like, you know, hands down, so. Can you, uh, can you do this, can you eat the raw food diet incorrectly? Sure, you could eat dates and almond butter for all day, <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> you could just fall into those pitfalls. A lot of people get into, you know, right away, a lot of frozen ice creams and weird stuff like that. That stuff is, you know, it's all right to get you in, you know, to like help you shake those addictions to that old, or you know, those old patterns that you were attached to with your, you know, your cooked foods, but. They're not optimal, really. Uh, the gourmet thing, even it's it's great transition, and you know I love it every now and then. But after two and a half years, I very I eat very little gourmet foods at all. As a matter of fact, I eat less and less all the time. So there's definitely, I mean, obviously I'm a big big proponent of the superfoods, and I think when you have those you know, you can probably get away with a lot <laughs> on the diet. So just go easy on the sweets, the sweet fruits. Go easy on the dates. Go easy on the dried fruits. You know, that, that stuff is just sugar. <clears throat> and what, and you know, what sets the way for candida is sugar, a moist environment within the colon. Fruit creates that. It's kind of like, think about what happens to a piece of fruit when you let it sit out, it goes bad, it turns the mold, it ferments, it gets really, really heinous. A vegetable just wilts. So that's kind of a representation of what's going on internally. So something to think about, you know, in terms of food combining, if you're eating nuts, 
unsoaked nuts and dry sweet fruits all the time. That's a terrible food combination right there. And I've even heard, uh, I believe Dr. Doug Graham mentioned that that's the setting up the way for you know, diabetes even, living on that kind of uh, you know, high fat, sweet fruit mixture. So be conscious, eat your greens, eat your good fats, go easy on the sweets. Can you succeed on this diet without supplementation or superfoods? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Again, I you know it's it's there's so many variables. So I would highly like anyone that starts it. I, I yeah, you can succeed for sure without those things. I highly recommend them. But you could you could definitely hold off. Some people just have really strong constitutions and things don't phase them, but you know, the average person doesn't, so they might want to consider a, <clears throat> some kind of a superfood. Have you seen emotional changes occur for the better on a raw food diet? Can, can, it really, can the raw food diet really help with emotional difficulties? I think absolutely. Um, certain, especially with the certain good fats, can really balance hormones within the body and really stabilize neurotransmitters and brain function and uh, <clears throat> sea veggies especially and algaes can really help increase uh, different uh, like can really aid with the rebalancing of neurotransmitters within the brain they can help with curing depression um, all kinds of you know they help with uh, the adrenals and all kinds of different things that can add up to <clears throat> emotional imbalance. But a lot of times emotional imbalance is just on a physical nutritional level is just uh, deficiencies in certain fats and oils, I would say. And uh, maybe also excessive sugars and uh, can definitely lead to things like depression and whatnot, too much sugar and not enough good like sodium, such as, you know, sodium from sea vegetables and such. Those things can really balance the emotional state. But again, all the nutrients in the world aren't gonna help, you know, combat negative thought forms and patterns, which are far more powerful than, than any diet. So, you know, positive positive thoughts, positive mindset are going to be really powerful with emotional balancing. So. Do you